been having latency issues, most people will tell you to click things without them even actually knowing what they are. Today, you'll learn a few tips and tricks on how to fix latency issues, and I will actually explain to you what's going on and what's happening when you click these buttons. Latency is generally related to buffer length and CPU usage, so let's optimize. Hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get started. So latency issues are almost always caused by our drivers and the processing time or the buffer lengths. So PS warning, don't just go copying my settings because I've got this open and you think I've got all the answers. I have a lot of these settings on for specific reasons. And if you don't understand what these things do, just turning them on or turning them off can actually cause issues. It can cause your FL Studio to crash and do more harm than good. So let's walk through the things that are important for latency issues and I'll explain to you what they are and why you would press them. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to know if we go to our drivers here is that our ACO devices section, ACO drivers are generally gonna be the best options and give you the least latency. If you don't have an ACO driver, you can go get ACO for all. Uh, they should have a website or a place for you to get that. It's generally installed with FL Studio. If it wasn't for you for some reason, then go find ACO for All and install it. There's also FL Studio ACO. Again, was installed with FL Studio. Now, things to understand, as soon as you start using these drivers, things can get funny sometimes. Uh, you might end up not being able to hear things outside of FL Studio while FL Studio is open. For example, if you have the internet open, you may, might not be able to hear a YouTube video. And this is because FL Studio actually takes priority on your sound drivers to make sure that it does its job properly. And when it does this, it can cause weird effects like that. So if that ends up being an issue, just exit out of FL Studio, refresh your YouTube page, you should be good. If you're not good, reopen FL Studio, change your input device, back to the item that it was originally, so your primary sound driver most of the time. And then after that, close FL Studio, you should be all good. So the immediate thing we're gonna check after choosing an ACO driver is your buffer length. If we go to buffer size, the smaller the number, the less latency we're gonna have, or sometimes it's a slider and the farther to the left is gonna be the less latency you have. However, when we start doing this, sometimes your computer has a harder time keeping up. You're telling your computer to handle more information more quickly without a buffer time or a time in which it can actually fulfill figuring out that info. And if this happens, you're gonna get popping and crackling in your audio, and you'll be able to tell by this section here called underruns. So if you see these ticking upwards and you got popping and crackling in your audio, then you know that you need to make your buffer length longer. Uh, so the goal is to find the perfect balance between your buffer length and your CPU's processing power. This safe overloads button, if it's not on, make sure it's on. What this does is this saves a little bit of space when your CPU starts maxing out for your graphics processing unit to continue to do its job correctly. If this is off, those underruns and when FL Studio starts having problems, um, can actually crash and freeze your FL Studio project because the graphics processor won't be able to keep the graphics moving on FL Studio. Next thing that we're gonna worry about is we're gonna worry about this triple buffer button. That button, I want you to notice we have a latency right here. This tells us what our latency is. This went from 25 to 19. Five. Triple buffer is for your mixer and your mixing. It's so that your effects and your plugins have enough time to work and the sound comes in as good as possible um, in your mixer. And so this is for people who are doing high intensive projects when they're mixing. I generally have this on. Sometimes I turn it off when I need to, but for the most part, it stays on. If you're not mixing or if you have a computer that has a lot of latency and can't keep up, turn the triple buffer off because it's only gonna give you more latency. What triple buffer is actually doing is it's doubling your buffer length. And so it's not increasing CPU usage, it's just increasing the amount of time that your CPU actually has for you to process things, which increases latency. Something else to note is that your latency issues might not actually be latency issues like this 25 milliseconds. It might actually be timing issues. 
If we look at playback tracking, you're going to see mixer, hybrid, and driver. Okay, so what this has to do with is it has to do with your visuals, um, as well as just the timing of where the playback head actually is. So if you select mixer, it's going to base it off of FL Studio. So if you're using a driver for like an external audio interface, you're going to want to set this to driver. And that can actually fix your latency issues because sometimes the drivers for different things like interfaces and FL Studio don't actually sync up. And if your driver is mainly processing the audio, then choosing your driver to be what you're syncing with can actually help with the latency issues of placing your notes. And in between that, we have hybrid. If you're still having issues, you can try hybrid. Hybrid is kind of base it off of FL Studio and the driver and kind of read from both. This will mainly generally help with the graphics, um, but it could also help with the placement of your notes. The next thing to know is offset. So before you do the offset, there's a couple other things to do, but let's just talk about this since we're here. Basically, I've got 25 milliseconds here of latency. If you notice, as I move this, it's minus or plus milliseconds. Now, I wouldn't necessarily match this to here because if we're messing with this, it's not necessarily a latency issue as much as a timing issue, if that makes sense. Um, FL Studio does a pretty good job of compensating for latency. FL Studio is compensating for the latency, but it's still off time because the timing is not syncing up how it's supposed to. So what you would do is play something as on time as possible and adjust this either way until you can get it as close as it needs to be. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable. Now, your timing issues could come from other places. So first place to look, if we look at top, we've got this snap panel. And we've got all these different options, okay? Line, cell, and none will be what you want to have it on. The reason being is anything else you select is six step all the way down to a bar is going to quantize your notes that you're playing when you record them to that timing. So you could be playing it on time, but it's going to snap it to a grid after it's done recording because of this thing up here. So go check this. Line, cell, and none will do no quantization. Anything else will quantize. So make sure you're on line, cell, or none. So the next is for recording a microphone or an instrument specifically. If you remember, I said that FL Studio does a pretty dang good job of taking care of this latency here. The option for doing that is actually in this dropdown. If you click this dropdown and you go to disk recording, you're going to have latency compensation. Make sure that's checked. If that's not checked, it's not going to compensate for FL Studio's latency. Uh, it, it generally comes checked. If it is unchecked for any reason, then you're going to start having an issue. So check that. Make sure it's checked. If it's checked, you're good. And then once you've checked those two things, fix it with your offset. Now, if you still have too much latency, too much of this for the milliseconds, and you can't get your buffer length short enough because your CPU usage is too high, something to give you a bit of an edge that you can do is you're going to want to make sure that this smart disable is turned on. And what smart disable does is it allows you to disable plugins while they're not being used. So for example, if I go here and I go to a J37 tape machine, I'm going to turn up the noise so you can just hear that it's on. I'm not using this right now. So if I go in here, I can go into my options and click Smart Disable. And then it's going to turn it off until audio gets ran through it. So if I run my mic input through it, now it's back on. Ooh. Now it's back on. Now, you might think, well, that's going to suck going through all these different plugins and choosing Smart Disable on them. Well, if you go Tools, Macros, you have an option right here for Switch Smart Disable for all plugins. And so if you have a bunch of plugins and you're having latency issues or just your CPU is maxing out, it's not even latency issues, you're maxing out your CPU, 
click that, it'll shut them off till it needs them. Now, the kind of stuff people don't tell you because they just tell you to click buttons and everything's all good and dandy is you need to understand that some plugins use timing or, you know, things like that, like Melodyne, for example. Melodyne is a plugin that maps out your vocals so that you can pitch correct them and fix the quantization and things like that. If you have Smart Disable on on a plugin like that, then your plugin can get off time with FL Studio and you'll think you got all your vocals set up right and recorded your vocals into it correctly and you're, you're sadly mistaken because Smart Disable was on, it messed it up. Now, on the positive side of things, if you have Smart Disable on, when you actually export your project, all of your effects are going to be on normally. So if you have something that's adding a vinyl crackle and you want that vinyl crackle to go through the whole song, just because that plugin isn't active because of Smart Disable doesn't mean it's not going to export properly. It will export with that crackling. Now, if you're recording in something busy like a hook and you turn Smart Disable on, then that hook comes in and all these different effects start playing. You're still going to have a maxed out CPU. So don't think this is a solve all. When that happens, you're just going to want to turn the plugins off. But here's something that's cool. If I hover over any of these plugins, this one, for example, you'll see in the top left, we've got a little red exclamation point. This means that this plugin is causing latency. And to the left of that red exclamation point, you'll see how much latency it's actually causing. And these can add up, or you could just have a massive plugin that's causing a lot of latency. And this will affect you when you're recording, especially if you're doing your vocals into an effects chain like mine, where this is live, but I have effects on it. You can cause latency doing this. So be weary of that. It might not be FL Studio, it might be your plugins. Next option we have in our audio settings is resampling quality. You can drop this if you wanna save some CPU usage. However, the thing to understand about this is if you drop it, you're gonna hear things differently than what they actually are. It can create harshness and like high end that doesn't even actually exist and other issues like that. So. If you are dropping it, you're dropping it a bunch, I just say do it for instrumentation, maybe do it for recording if you need to. And the lowest I'd go is six point Hermite. Besides that, I'd go 16 point sync. 16 point sync is probably the lowest I'd recommend, but below that, six point Hermite, you can go there. Don't go to two point linear, cause just, I mean, you can do it to hear what it sounds like and what happens, I wouldn't do it personally. Next place to go to help with CPU usage, to help give you that edge on having a faster buffer length, is you're going to go project, and there's this time settings here. You got time-based PPQ, okay? I see people all the time telling people to change this and not telling them what it does. You should know what this does before you change it. If we zoom in here, I put something on here, and I go to none. We have all these points that we can link to. When we drop this PPQ, not only is that going to change, but how far we can zoom in is going to change. And the reason they do this is to help with the graphics processing and help with keeping the data down because you don't have to worry about as many points. So if I drop this, I want you to see how that is now jumping by all these points. If I bring it back up, there's a lot more points between there. And the reason you should know this before changing it is because if you have automation, like volume automation, or you added a tiny bit of swing to your drums to give them that feel, you, you might just fuck it up to change in the PPQ. So only change this when it makes sense to change it and you know it's not gonna mess with your project. And besides that, if someone else tells you to change it because it's going to speed up your computer and that's the only reason they give you and they're acting like it's all okay, tell them to kick rocks and come subscribe to my channel. To summarize, buffer length is how long it takes for the computer to process information or how much leeway or time it's giving itself to process that information, which can cause latency. Your driver is very important. ACO drivers are generally going to have the quickest buffers. Sometimes your buffer length is going to be limited by your CPU usage. So we can try to do things to increase your CPU's availability to process the information that needs to be processed for you to get rid of that latency. 
And sometimes it's not even a latency issue at all, but it's a time synchronization issue between FL Studio and whatever sound driver you are using. And if you got here from my MIDI controller videos and you want to get back to where you left off, please click the video for linking MIDI controllers. As always, I appreciate you guys. If you like the video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. It's your boy Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.